A lot of times audio interfaces will have uh, MIDI ports built into them, so if you only have one or two pieces of gear, that should be good enough. If your interface doesn't have MIDI ports or if you have more gear, then you need a separate MIDI interface. I'm using the Ederall UM880, it has eight inputs and eight outputs. And the other thing is a lot of, a lot of newer uh, racks and keyboards have USB ports, so you actually don't even need to connect them with MIDI. You can actually just connect them right to the computer and use uh, MIDI over USB. So. and this is a Korg Z1, it's a synthesizer. This is actually two components, even though when you play it, it feels like one. It's actually two. You got the controller section with the keyboard, the knobs, uh, the XY pad, and the wheels. All right, that sends a signal out to control stuff. And then you got the sound source, which is the synth engine in this case, and that receives a signal in to tell it what to play and when to play. And right now, it, the sound source is receiving its signal directly from the keys. But when you're using with a, with a sequencer, you don't want that. What you have to do is turn local. It's called local on this synth. On other synths, it's called local keyboard or local control. You're going to want to turn that off. And now, when you press a key, you're not going to hear any sound anymore. But don't worry, your keyboard is not broke. It's supposed to be like that. So now it's set up, and then we just need to make the connections. All right, to use the controller, we're going to connect the MIDI output from the keyboard to the MIDI input of the MIDI interface. And then we're going to take the output from the MIDI interface to the MIDI input of the keyboard that lets us use the sounds. Alright, a sound module is much easier to connect because there's no controller section, so you don't need to turn local control off or anything like that. All you need to do is take a, a MIDI output from your MIDI interface to the MIDI input on the rack. You don't need to do anything with the MIDI output from the rack. Alright, and we're going to be using a, a motif rack for this uh, example. All right, to use the keyboard as a controller in live, you have to find the port you have it connected to under input and turn the track switch on. That gets the signal from the keyboard into live so you can use it as a controller. All right, to use the sounds, you have to go down to output and find the port you have it connected to and turn the track switch on for that as well. That gets the output out of live into the keyboard so we can hear the sounds. For the rack, there is no input, all right, so we just have to go to the output here and I have uh, the rack connected to my fifth port so I just turn the track switch on for that and now I can use the rack. Alright so we can get out of here and uh, on my tracks the MIDI from right now is, is set to receive from all instruments. Alright I'm just going to leave it like that. That way I can use any of my controllers to control you know this track. Alright and the MIDI 2 I'm going to set that up to my first port which is the port that I have my Z1 connected to and uh, now I can use the Z1 on that track. For my fourth track, I'm going to uh, leave the MIDI from the same, and then the MIDI 2 is going to be my fifth port, which is the, the port that I have the motif rack connected to. All right, so now we're all set up. All right, so you can see an input signal coming in when I'm pressing the keys, but we don't hear anything. In order to hear something, we need to arm the track. All right, and there's the Z1. All right, if I wanted to play the motif, I just switch the track 4. Alright, and there's the motif. And like I said before, I can use either controller, so I could play it on the uh, pad control too.
All right, multis are usually set up so that each part is on a separate MIDI channel. So part one is on channel one, part two is on channel two, etc., all the way up to part 16. All right, so to use that, what we're going to do is we're going to set up four tracks that all have the same output port, which is port five, which is the port that I have the motif connected to. And then this drop down menu here for channels, we're going to leave this first one on channel one for part one. The second one's going to go to channel two for part two, then part three and then part four. So now I have four parts set up. All right, so to play those parts, I just need to arm the tracks they're on. That's part one, part two, part three, and part four. All right, that's pretty much it. Alright, so once you're done sequencing, you're going to want to record the audio. And uh, in live, you do that by creating an audio track and then uh, just connecting your uh, sound module or keyboard, whatever, to the interface and then just recording. Alright, now it's audio. That's all there is to it.